Um, so you're with Sean and Andy from Tough Waterproofing. Um, in this video, we're going to show you the top coating of this roof example that we did earlier. Um, we're going to do a little bit of preparation with it first. We're going to give it a very light rub down just to take off any little um, nibs and everything we've got. And as you can see, the system rubs down very, very nicely. Just take off any of those little spots. To be honest, uh, you know, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty good. So. Very little rubbing down needs on that one, Sean, is there? Yeah. Um, that's it. Yeah, once, so once you're happy, obviously we've created a little bit of dust. So we're just going to take off any dust. So if we've laminated this today and we're going to get on it this afternoon, that's absolutely fine. That's all the preparation we're going to need. Yeah, that's all you need to do, yes. But it might be that we did this yesterday and now we're going to come back the following day and we've had a bit of rain overnight. To, to refresh this ready for the top coat, we are going to give this a thorough wipe down with some acetone. Yep. Something we don't normally do on standard GRP. Um, so that is for the flexible system only. Yep. And, and it's a case of getting your rag or your pad nice and wet and we want to give it almost a bit of a scrubbing action, isn't it, John? Absolutely. So what we tend to do on, a, on a, if you're doing a larger roof, you get um, a, a bucket, uh, decant some acetone into the bucket, yeah. saturate your, your uh, rag, squeeze it out, and then all we're going to do is going to scrub over the surface, and you you might just get a little bit of a little bit of uh, colour come off, which is what we you know pretty much we're happy to see. So that's going to decontaminate the surface, clean it, and also it will, it will mix with any uh, microbeading of moisture on there yeah. and um, evaporate it away very quickly and essentially make sure it's 100% dry. So it's worth so, just giving that a couple of minutes, isn't it, just to let that evaporate out. It does yeah. evaporate out really quickly. Very, very quickly. Um, and then we know we're in good order for that. Okay. So there we go, so nicely wiped down with the acetone. So as we've done all the way through, we check our temperatures and we're seeing here that our temperature um, dropped a little bit, we're down to 13 degrees, but okay. it still puts us in that band, doesn't Does, it? Yes. Um, one other thing we would say, now, if you are using one bucket top coat your roof area, absolutely fine, use it out of this bucket. If your roof area is big enough that you're going to be using a bucket, yep. two buckets or bucket and a part bucket, there could be very small difference in colours between the batching. Yeah. We would always recommend, as we do with the standard system, mix those pots together yes. so that the colour is actually blended through and then apply it. It's, it's what a professional painter, painter would, do. would do. He would blend his tins. If you do get a little bit of colour difference, as the roof dries and cures and then starts to age in those first couple of months, you'll see those colours basically really blend, don't they? Yeah. Um, but give yourself a, a good um, chance to get it absolutely right, blend the buckets together, um, and, and you're, you're in good order. Yeah, uh, you might find that when you're laying this at different, you know, it may be a big roof, and you're laying it at different times yeah. of the day, uh, different temperatures maybe, you know, the sun's in and out, you might get shade variations, but don't worry about that because it will all, eventually it will blend into one and uh, be totally fine. So now, you way. can put in cold weather the accelerator into your top coat as well. Um, if the weather, if that temperature is dropping, you know, it's at one, two o'clock in the afternoon and you can feel that temperature really starting to drop. Sometimes we've left it and top coat the next day, Sean, haven't we? Yes. Um, but as I say, uh, if, if it is that temperature's going down, at least use the accelerator. Um, so, because we've got half the amount of resin to top coat this, our half litre per square metre, 
Um, I've actually used a scoop and a half in this. Yeah, so we've got um, half a litre in there. And and like a standard rig, we tend to do all our detail work. Detail work first. All our perimeters first, you know. Yep. Um, because we've got access to all around this, it's not a major issue, but if you've got a roof and you're up on the, you know, up single stories, two stories, do all your perimeter work first, and then you do your field area yep. afterwards. But as I say, we got access to all way around this. As you've got the gloves on, Sean, I think I'll <laughs> hand that over to you. I forgot to put some gloves on. No worries. <laughs> so again, we tend to let, uh, the way we do it, we tend to let the roller do all the work. Yeah. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to quickly do all the, all the edges. Yeah. Now the trick is not to put this down too thin. As yeah. I say, you should be potting your roof out, you know, measuring it out, making sure that you get in that half a litre per yeah. litre. So, yeah. you know. Um, this top coat is going to look like it's going down thicker than you would um, use with standard top coat, um, but we want it to go down thicker. If you put it down too thin, the chances are that it can actually then start to separate from the base layer. Um, so don't be scared about putting it down thicker than you would with conventional um, GRP. As you can see now, where we put that first coat prime it on those trims and we can see it's a little bit opaque in places this will start to now have solid colour on it as I say the rollers take a little bit of time to get working properly and once they start loading up properly then happy days you can and for some reason going. this does not seem to want to slump the way that other liquids do Sean does it now this is a big word Fixotropic. Fixotropic, yes it is. Uh, more fixotropic than you would see with a standard resin on top coat, isn't it? Yes. Um. So doing vertical surfaces with the whole system is not a problem. You yeah. know, you, as with other systems, you might put it on the wall, walk away, when you come back, you find it on the floor. But yeah. with this, it's uh, happy low. So I'm um, working my way around the actual perimeter of the roof. Yeah. And the beauty of this is, if you get it on and you're thinking, oh, that's a little bit thick there, you can lay it off, can't you, almost like a paint. It, it's very, yeah. very forgiving. Um, what I tend to do when I'm walk, doing the edges, if I've got any splashes, just wipe them out because if they cure, they'll, they'll leave you know, unsightly drip marks and things. But as you can see, it's starting, my roll is starting to work really lovely. I'm getting nice thick coats down onto the edges now. nearly ready to do the field area and what we tend to do is let the roller do the work so when you load up you don't want to be pushing on that roller to make it coat you just want to let the roller because I'm putting no weight on that at all and that's giving me a nice even yeah and obviously as we're doing it we're looking to make sure we haven't got any pinhole in um, obviously if we saw any pinhole in while we were sanding we can put a little bit on there just prior to top coating. Um, I seem to find that when the roller's not making any noise, the quantities are right. It's when that roller starts to hiss a little bit, yes, because yes. there's not enough liquid yeah. on it. Yeah. Um, so this was, I think, it was about 0.75 of a of a meter. Yeah. But that was a, that was the field area. But you take into account all your trims. Yeah. And your upstands and pretty everything. Pretty close to a meter. So we're pretty much spot yeah. on there because we've pretty much used all of this. Yeah. Now, so that's not far off. I've got a little bit left in there, which I would expect. Yeah. But I'm just going to finish off that last bit. And I don't know why, but I still find it easier to top coat on a roller with a pole. You just get a better field of vision, I, th I think. Yeah. I'm just going to go up through that bit up through there, Sean. That's all just where I was standing in the way earlier. That's it. Happy days. And now that is your roof finished. Again, we're talking maybe 30 to 60 minute cure time on that. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Depending on, on, on temperature and your catalyst addition. Um, and that is going to look as it does now incredibly nice but of course as we said before you know um, if, it's, if it rains on it now it's not a problem no. it's going to carry on curing exactly so that's our finished standard roofs um, finished we will show you in um, uh, in another video 
basically how we can address any issues that we might find that we might miss or any modifications and we're also going to show you the anti-slip so the balcony coatings uh, with, with the granules as yeah. well um, so that'll be coming up in a future video uh, and that's it see you soon